Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kevin. If you don't know me, most of you do. Um, today, I thought it'd be kind of fun. I had some friends and uh, stuff that requested a walkthrough on one of these here. This is uh, a Volano fifth wheel made by Van Lee RV out of Mississippi. Um, and uh, you know, I, I've been at this for about uh, 13 years now as a service tech, and uh, I gotta say, this is a pretty impressive fifth wheel. Um, there's a few things, small things, that I don't care for that I wish they would change, um, but I'm sure it's all in, in time. But uh, here is what we got. So, something I like, it's got the Auto level. That's a six point hydraulic system, so you don't have to mess around too much with uh, electric motors and stuff. The only drawback is the uh, colder weather makes it work a little harder. But Puts a little bit of weight on it, picks it up. That's your other side going down now. <clears throat> well, that thing's thinking. Two hands. Here. It's got the lipper brain box in there. As soon as it turns on. Come on. And that's how quick it takes to level it. The shop's not that unleveled, but there she goes. This here, what it'll enable you to do <coughs> is you can actually manually level the trailer and get a better reading of how far off it is if, if it needs to be readjusted and stuff so as soon as it lights up here but uh, you can adjust the trailer a little bit side to side front to rear whatever you wind up needing if it's not quite to what your comfort is for a level so you can actually select if you need to you can extend the front a little bit or bring it back down. So that's kind of a nice little feature there. Um, what I also like, see if I can put this back around. There we go. Make it easier for me to see what I'm doing. What I also like is <clears throat> I think their water bay is a real nice setup here. They've got your water filter where you can get at it real easy. Um, easy to hook up, you know, your city water, your tank rinser, uh, the power cord is actually a power retracting cord reel, and it just rolls back up in there behind the wall, and it's out of the way. Um, the uh, It's 50 amp service, which is kind of sweet. Um, probably not the best location. I mean, that 50 amp cord really would be better off back there on that panel behind the wheels, behind the slide out, actually. But uh, it is 50 amp service. You know, so you can run all your ACs and refrigerators and stuff. This one doesn't have a residential fridge. It's got an RV fridge. But um, you've got all your low point drains and stuff are right here. Easy to get at. Nothing stuck behind any access panels and like that. Some trailers, you got to pull access panels off to get to all this stuff. Um, what I like about this setup here is it's real easy to figure out. Some manufacturers have got labels and you have to turn this valve to position one and that valve to position two to do this and then you turn it to three and four to do that and what a pain in the butt this one here normal this is your water heater bypass arrows pointing to normal water heater is in the loop means water is going to go right into your water heater fill it up and then you know onto your uh, different fixtures 
Um, when it's winter, time to winterize your coach, if you're that kind of a person that doesn't head south for the winter, you, hit, you flip it over to bypass, and the water here is bypassed. You pull out your drain plug, drain it out, you run your antifreeze through it, or push your, you know, a lot of folks are doing air these days. You hook up your air compressor to your city water and blow out the lines. Real simple that way. But again, something you don't have to tear panels off and reach back in there. Because as you can imagine, you would have to go in through there, over to there, to get to your water heater. And that's a pain in the butt. Uh, well, you got your water hooked up here, what's kind of sweet too, is you've got your city water uh, mixing valve here. That's real simple. If you want to, if you're at a campground that's got full hookup, hook up your hose, flip it to city, let it run. If you want to fill your tank, flip it to tank, hook up your hose, let it go. You once you're, if you're a boondocking or at a state park, you got your tank filled already and you're ready to go, flip it to pump, pumps the water through your system. Time to winterize it, same thing. Turn it to winterize, sucks your antifreeze in. Real simple setup. Um, <clears throat> it's something else that's kind of a, I don't know how many people actually use ice makers in their, you know, their RVs, but this one here actually has an on-off valve right here. Not buried behind some cabinet. You know, you have to pull out your refrigerator, you know, to get to it and all kinds of other junk. You know, this is real easy, and they made it nice and easy to tell what it is. So, um, I don't see this on too many coaches, really. I can't think I've seen it on very many coaches at all. But, um... Electric dump valves. Flip a switch, your valve is open. Flip a switch, valve is open. Close it again. Done. Light goes on, tank's open. Light goes off, tank's closed. Doesn't get any easier than that. <clears throat> um, you got a pump switch here that you can turn your pump on off from out here or inside. And again, they got all your utilities for your satellite dish, cable TV. Your tripod, auxiliary, satellite, all right here and labeled. You know, talk about doing stuff right for a change. Um, utility shower is a utility shower. Nothing real fancy there. But, you know, you do got a nice cover. So after you're done camping, you could pull your utilities out and cover that back up. Keep the critters and stuff out. But uh, just a regular RV furnace. Not real special. Most of these seem to have... Uh, if they don't have it, then it's an option, is the um, electric heat pump and the air conditioner, which, you know, it works pretty nice for taking the chill out of the air, but, um, you know, the furnace can actually kick in with that and assist in warming the coach up, and then once it's to a certain degree, the furnace will kick off, and then it lets the heat pump and the air conditioner do its own thing. So, I want to say this is a 10-gallon. Yep, it's 10-gallon gas electric Atwood water heater. Um... I think everything we've, we've got is like, this is only our second one that's in stock right now. Um, has a, a 10 gallon tank water heater. Both of them, I think, have 10 gallon tank waters. But I know there's an option for the, I'm going to say this wrong, Truma tankless water heater. And a gentleman from Truma corrected me the other day. He actually told me it's not really necessarily a tankless, it's more of a hybrid. So it can produce a massive amount of hot water without running out while you're camping. So, <clears throat> um, that's something that can be changed out later. And from what he was telling me, it's not a difficult thing to do. So, you got your sewer hookup down there. If you guys can't figure out how that works, take the cap off, pull it off, quarter turn, off it comes, hook up your hose, away you go. Um, the little things they do that make things right. That little door there, yeah, it's way up there, and you can't reach it, and it's got a key to get into it, but you know what? That is to get to the back of your shower faucet without dismantling your whole shower surround or having to cut a hole in your pantry in your kitchen to get to it. You know, people have asked, you know, why do I have to get to my shower uh, faucet? Well, because typical maintenance of a coach, new or used, you bounce it down the road and things come loose. Fittings back off. Um, you know, things like that. So as a customer and an owner, really, whether you, you own a Volano, a, a Jayco, a Sunseeker, you know, a Tiffin motorhome, it doesn't matter how much you've spent, really, you should be checking your water connections, you know, um, especially on brand new coaches, because that rubber O-ring in there hasn't got a memory yet 
to the fitting that it's screwed into. And what will happen is as you use the faucet, your hot water, this and that, different water pressures, the, the ring seems to get a memory and then it's not 100% as tight as it used to be. And then it can vibrate loose. I've seen it. Um, actually, I've witnessed it. Some friends of my grandparents ran into that. Um, and it was a fitting for the kitchen sink right above the TV in their living room. Um, if that makes any sense. And when it went, it dumped water all over the um, living room TV and they had to buy a new one. That's back when they had tube TV still. And uh, they wound up fixing that one. Grandpa actually helped them fix it, but, you know, they didn't get a hold of me until after they'd come home. By the time they'd gone back out the fine weekend, the other line let loose and they dumped water all over the TV again. So that's two TVs in a week. So they won't be making that mistake. So moving on down here a little bit. This is your refrigerator. Let's see if I can get this open without a key. Uh. There we go. Oh, look at that. An RV fridge with an ice maker. You don't see that too often anymore. It was a pretty hot thing back in the day. It seems like it must be coming back. But this is how I know it's an ice maker. That's your water valve. That's your water line coming into it. And then your copper line here runs up to the back of the ice maker. So there's your gas opening back there. Not too much to really see here, but that is the bigger refrigerator. I want to say... It's a side-by-side -side RV gas electric fridge, and I want to say it's something to the extent of, um, I'm trying to think, if it's 8 or 10 cubic foot, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, and what's nice with this is, if you, you know, because it is the bigger RV fridge, it is functional for traveling. You don't have to have a residential fridge to, you know, run down the road. Yeah, it's nice, but <clears throat> you'd only need one battery in the coach to maintain this fridge by itself for a few days. I know with our trailer on the smaller six cubic foot that we have in ours, I can hook up my battery on Monday, light the fridge on propane, and by Friday, Saturday, I still have over three quarters of a battery still alive. So that's not a bad thing either. Um, they've got all frameless windows and I'm sure and don't quote me on this, I'm sure there's an option for uh, double pane windows. Which don't confuse that for the same thing as double pane windows like you have at home in your house, um, where it's got the gas in there and everything else. They don't, they're not the same setup per se as your house. It does a similar thing that your house windows do, but not 100%. It helps a little bit. That's just your stove exhaust hooked up to your microwave, and that's your your heat exchange for your, your refrigerator. You know, all the heat that makes up here goes up, comes back out there, up and away it goes. Now this coach doesn't have slide toppers, but we did do an order out for a customer not too long ago on one, the front bathroom model that uh, came in with toppers, but um, that's what they wanted. So, and they got a beautiful finish. I mean, it's just typical fiberglass finish, but what a beautiful finish this thing has on it. Nice and shiny, you know, very, very, very clean. You know, not a lot of waves on the side, which is, you know, hard to get away from altogether uh, with lamination as far as I'm concerned. But tires, little green cap means you're filled with nitrogen instead of air. So the tire pressure doesn't fluctuate as much as uh, traditional, you know, air, air filled tires. If the tires are the same, you can have nitrogen put in at any point. You have to find somebody that can do it for you if you don't already have it. Um, but these come already set up that way. Um, with the Nice looking rims they've got here with their Van Lee logo, and that's not a sticker. That's actually embossed in the uh, aluminum cap here. It's pretty sweet. It's got the LCI Equal Equiflex uh, Equalizer. Um, that'll probably give you a much smoother ride um, running down the road. And believe it or not, if you've got just a traditional equalizer on your coach now, if you have a towable, um, if you can go to something like this, for me personally, I recommend more rides set up. Um, we, I added it to our coach, um, I want to say, not last year, might have been last year. I think I added it last year to our trailer. We were running home from a, from a camping trip, and I looked over at her, and I said, Is it me, or does the trailer seem like it's riding a little bit smoother? She goes, You know, I thought so too, but I didn't want to say anything. It doesn't seem like it's bucking us 
quite as bad as it has in the past. So we both feel that we made a that I made a good decision. Well, she's never happy with the money that I spend, you know, on the trailer, but you know, it is what it is. I guess I should have grabbed the flashlight, but if you can kind of see here, there's a little rubber bumper there on each side. And what that does is it dampers. So as the camper's going on the road, this and this are moving in and out, and it along with this yellow piece is twisting. And what that does is this buffers some of that nasty vibration that just vibrates these things to death. And that will actually help give you a much smoother ride. Um, your belongings in the coach won't move as much and all that kind of good stuff. But, um, and, and also in the long run, it'll actually help save some of your, your, sha your uh, not shackles. Well, yeah, it'll shave your shackles too, but I'm thinking um, your bushings, I'm sorry. There's a bushing in here and there's a bushing in the leaf. Um, being that these are the upgraded system, you know, from just a traditional system, um, I'm going to say this is probably going to have the um, brass bushings and, ooh, from what I can feel here too, it's actually got greasable zerk fittings on the bolts. I don't know if I can get a, a view all the way to the other side of the trailer. Eh, that's not coming in too good, but let's see if I can zoom out now. There it goes. Anyways, so the greasable zerks on each side on the inside and this is something very smart on um, Van Lee's behalf I feel it's smart um, some units these tires are so close together and I mean they are tight uh, I want to say when I used to work back in Chicago at the one dealership I want to say it was Cedar Creek you could literally barely stick your hand between the tires and this has got some room you know, and I know a lot of folks that buy these kind of coaches are up there in age. You know, they might be in their 50s and up, you know, um, buying these coaches and running down the road. And, you know, if they got the money, they can afford to pay some guy to maintain it for them every 12 months, 12,000 miles for your your bearings, brakes, and suspension, all that stuff. That's great. But not everybody wants to do that. A lot of folks, I find, want to, you know, just maintain it themselves. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's money out of our pocket here at the dealership. Um, however, you know, if you want to do it too, or maybe you use the camper excessively, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But um, what happens is with those tires being so tight, you can kind of see it too. There's a bolt right there, and there's one up over there that it would be very difficult to get a grease gun on, um, depending on the gun you have. Some have, you know, like a, a swiveled elbow you can get on there, click it on. Some don't. But what Van Lee has done, which is what I do when I have to do suspension work here, um, and I want to say, well, see, our coach, I don't have the greasable Zerk shit on our coach. But when I upgrade ours to the greasable wet bolt kit on our camper, what I'll do is have the nuts like they have facing the tire and the Zerk fitting looking under the trailer. And like I was saying about folks that are up there in age, you know, um, I remember as a kid, Grandpa crawling under the camper, you put a tarp down or whatever, a blanket, he'd crawl under the camper, do whatever he had to do or whatever, and he'd come back out. You know, back then he was probably in his late 50s, early 60s, I'm going to guess, when we were still moving the camp around once in a while. Um, but to put a blanket down and crawl under this side and the grease, you're going to have one, two, three, right there, four. Depends on how you can get to them. You might be able to reach... This one, these two, and there's one over there, so that's four. And then come out and come around this side, do the same thing, and grease them, and you don't have to fight the tire. I have had units you have to pull the tire off. You're never going to get to that front bolt behind the tire. It is not fun. Um, as those Zerk fittings get older, that little, uh, like, it's like a ball bearing on there, doesn't like to push in. Um, another reason I like them backwards like this but um, with the Zerks under the trailer is, yeah, they're getting road spray and stuff as you're driving on the road from the, you know, the mist of the road. But they're not facing the tire, getting all of the road spray the tires are throwing up on the, on the, you know, off the road. So it's actually a little bit better, in my opinion. I, every time I've ever taken one of these apart, whether they have the Zerks or not, um, I was always taught to do it with the bolt head on the back side and the nut on the outside. 
Um, one of the other reasons too is when you run the nut down onto that bolt, the back side of the, the shaft, just behind the head of the bolt, is little fingers like, and they're just a smidge bigger than the hole is for the bolts, and it'll actually bite into that steel and keep the bolt head from spinning. So um, when you flip them around and you go the other way from the back out, um, you're basically in like Virgin steel, I guess, would be the term, I guess. I'm not sure if that's a good way to put it or not. You get the hint. Um, there's no grooves in the steel already from the previous bolt. So, just pretty good, easy maintenance. I mean, I like that. No, it's not easy for folks that are up there in age, but, you know, and by that I'm talking when you start getting into your 50s and stuff. Maybe even your 40s. Depends on your medical reasons, your medical problems and stuff. But, um... Seriously, that is very impressive. I never did notice that. They do have a very nice, very clean underbelly. What I like is I don't see a lot of the belly material dipping and waving like this front to rear. Um, it's not. It's probably vertically impossible to get it that smooth. I'm, I'm very surprised at how well they've done um, on keeping this very, very, very so we can get a better view of that. Very flat along the bottom of the trailer. There is a spot up towards the front there where it bellies down, but I will bet money that that is a waste tank uh, of some sort. You're black or you're gray or whatever. And you have to have some leeway for the for the, the uh, waste tank to belly down. Um, you know, spare tire, nothing fancy, just a steel wheel. But um, it is a matching rubber tire, which is always a nice little thing. Um, but it drops down just like the truck on the other side of the trailer, on the door side, curb side, or passenger side, however you want to call it. <coughs> um, it's just a three-quarter inch shaft that comes out the end with a three-quarter inch socket you'll use, um, or the old-fashioned traditional crank handle. Stick it on there, crank it down. One, two, three. If you're uh, a little bit savvy, you get a three-quarter inch socket on your drill and on the torque speed the slower speed you can let the tire down and back up again without hurting or breaking anything which is kind of nice um, again something else Volano does or Van Lee is it's already set up for a bike rack one there one here and what that does is it makes it possible for you to buy the stock unit that we've opted out of putting that on because not everybody wants that option you know but the trailer comes ready for it all we have to do is call van lee and order up their hitch that goes in here it bolts in place and you're done um, i've never been a fan of the ones that clamp around the bumper and it gives you like a receiver tube it can be on top or it can hang off the bottom or they make bike racks that clamp around the the uh the bumper um, if you look at some of the older campers, you'll see uh, uh, a sticker sometimes on the bumper here. And not very many manufacturers tell you this anymore. But the bumper is only designed to carry the spare tire. Um, this coach, it's under the camper. Um, and the reason for that is they only weld, they only weld three sides. This side, the inside, the top, and as you can see there, they don't weld the bottom. Um, we have at dealerships I've worked for in the past. We've had to weld gussets in top and bottom on both sides to reinforce this to this. But as soon as we weld on a brand new coach, um, we just voided the manufacturer's warranty. If if somebody outside of the frame manufacturer, which I'm going to guess because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure I'll see the sticker here in a bit. I'm going to guess this is an LCI or a Lippert chassis built to van lee's specifications and if you weld on it and knock them you take full responsibility of anything that goes wrong with that chassis so the nice thing is it's not an issue because we're already set up um and as practice would be you could if you wanted to purchase a second tire or if you don't want to screw around with that tire under there you can actually get the old-fashioned spare tire carrier and clamp it to the bumper here and have your tire hanging in the back here which is what i like to do i know it's not as secure as some but to me that's more my thing 
Um, does it actually fit a sewer hose? Yes, Laura, it actually does. Um, and I tell you what, I'll grab a sewer hose and I'll show you. Um, the bumper caps, though, are in the compartment, all stashed away. It's not a matter of does it fit a sewer hose, it's a matter of will these stay on the bumper. That's, that's more like the, uh, the, the trick question. Let me see here. A sewer hose. Not that you guys really need a sewer hose, Laura. You guys have got uh, all that boondocking you do. You just need a little 10 footer to go from your coach to the, to the dump station. <laughs> Alright, this is my shop sewer hose. And our shop does have sewer hookup in here, so I can actually do this stuff. Uh, work on tanks and stuff in here, but seriously. And my hose isn't in the greatest shape either, but you get the hint. Um, yeah, you can kind of see there. Um, my coach, I've got a... Uh, the same bumper basically and I've got the rhino hose is my, my preferred choice for the sewer hose I know this sounds silly talking about sewer hoses but seriously um, I've got a 15 footer that collapses down that's maybe three foot long it's got caps in each end and then I stick it right in here and with the caps I can push it in far enough and then put the, the bumper cover on it take the cover off and still grab the sewer hose and pull it out but I also have a five foot extension on that side of the trailer so, I wanted to use that once. Magnetic ends that connect to the sewer hose. Works really well to pull the hose out of the bumper. Well, that's pretty sweet. Um, Rod, what I actually like to do, my, she may not like it so much, but what I do sometimes, if the sewer hose gets caught, and I have had it stuck before, I go to the other side, pull off that hose, and take the broom handle, and push it through, it knocks it out. <laughs> and she's not too crazy about that, but... But, uh, but she don't know, don't hurt her. And it ain't like I'm touched anything nasty. But um, it seems like everyone I've seen has got the ladder on it. And it's already pre-wired and set up for a backup camera. Um, I just installed one of those aftermarket for a gentleman on a uh, another, um, what was that? A Sundance fifth wheel. And I tell you what, I think that's a pretty neat setup. Pretty simple for the most part. Um, it is a Furion camera setup, and I'm not sure if you can use any brand, but, but it is a pretty neat setup. Um, the roof line, unlike most fifth wheels, and I probably can't show that very well, the roof line, the roof is flat, front to rear. Um, some units have it where right about, oh, the neck of the woods are here maybe, to about there, it's flat. Then from there forward, it slopes down, and from here backwards, it'll slope off. What's nice is, I want to say it's like a 10-foot ceiling inside the slide-out rooms, the two main living room slides. That's pretty neat, too. You know, very impressive. Um, just little things that I do like about the Van Lee, too, is these here, those are gas connections. Those gas connections are for your slide. One's for your fridge, one's for your stove. If there's ever an issue, you can shut off the gas line, disconnect it, and put the cap on it, and you're done. Until you get around to getting it fixed, so you don't have to shut off all your propane in your coach. So, you know, that's just a little something. <clears throat> uh, again, not a little thing. Motion-sensed lights. If nothing moves, the light goes off. Just the little things that I kind of like. Something they've done too, which has made things kind of nice too, is it's got the dual propane um, set up. But instead of having two tanks on one side, they actually have one on each side. And the door is nice and big. Um, so you can you know put the bottom of the tank in here, sits on some nice steel plates, push it up against the wall. The tank probably stands about yay high. Um, and uh, you hook up your hose to it. And, it's got a set up here, you can set up and lock it. Uh, it doesn't run your battery yet. No, actually, I don't believe it will because, again, I just walked away a second ago and it's out already. Uh, but you have the option, like this one here, 
you can select that on all the time or you can put it to the second setting and it will like that see it's back on again it just caught me moving um, it'll kick off when there's no movement and as soon as something moves fires back up um, so I don't think so long once you got mice in there so um, but anyways something too and again I guess I look at the maintenance stuff you know there's your level and here's your front landing leg easy to get to your two lines go up and out and get to all your bolts the reason this compartment is all open is with storing a propane bottle propane's heavy it's got to get out if there's a leak so it'll fall through here and out from under the coach so um what else we got here on this side i think that's pretty pretty much covers the whole off door side um Laura, tell John to get on the Facebook. He's messaging me. <laughs> um, like I said before, though, it's got the leveling buttons here, so you don't have to be in the camper to hook or unhook your coach. You can even use your auto level. And it's got the auto hitch height. Turn that on. And what's nice about that auto hitch height is... Hey lady, I like my slide toppers. <laughs> um, what's nice with the auto hitch height is it'll retract all four rear jacks. Let's see if it'll do it. Yep. And it'll raise the nose or lower the nose to the last position, which basically comes down to the height that you unhooked the coach from, from your truck. When you unhooked it and pulled your truck away and you hit auto level, the system remembers where that was. So you can walk back over here, push auto level again. It'll level itself off. It'll drop the back four jacks again, level up front to back, side to side, and it'll be all good. So, well, that's thinking I don't want to be under there. So it's got a Rotoflex pin box. Um, now this is nice. Uh, it's going to do the same thing as a lot of the other uh, pivoting pin boxes, the Moride. Um, what is that? The Moride. I, I can't think of the name of it, but anyways, it's a Moride pin box. It's got tubes that run front to back and side to side. Um, and what it does is it buffers that Jocelyn, the camper, does when it's usually trying to buck you going on the road. That's what I call it, bucking. And um, there's the trail air that's got an air shock that sticks out. That's actually a very nice setup. Um, the best one is supposed to be the fifth airborne, I believe. Um, not had an experience with a fifth airborne, but everybody talks about it. Rod, I'm a big fan of the Moride thin box too. I have hauled with them and I really do like them. So, like I said before about the paint, just a, the bucking is a headache, trust me. Yes, it is. I could not own a fifth wheel without something to buffer that bucking. She would not be happy. I would have to hear about it constantly. So, I think it's done. So right here, we got us a little toggle switch. That you turn on gives you your front cap pitch lights pretty sweet um, and there we go she's set up for solar so that's another little little something extra that uh, a lot of manufacturers are doing it these days but you know it's always a perk it's generator ready on the last one, I think I got one in here for service, actually. I was just working on for a customer. Um, it was uh, all set up, uh, already had the generator. But it looks like they've actually made it easier. They've got cutouts in the bottom that you cut out to put your generator in. Um, it's got a built-in surge protector. Um, that looks like, which one is that? Surge guard. It says 120, 240 volt, 50 amp, 60 hertz. Model 41, 41 260, I'm sorry. Uh, there's your front. Uh, what do you call that? Oh, it's the, the board for the leveling system. It reads what's going on. Uh, I'm sure you do, Laura. <laughs> but then again, what I just learned is... He was doing work on the camper and found out that he was, had missed something that you had been talking to him about. So, um, now for anybody that's into the whole solar stuff, 
you know, this may not seem like a lot of room for you for batteries. I mean, Van Lee comes already set up for two. Um, right now, this one only has one in it. Um, that's how we kind of have it all on. But if you don't want the generator, just put it there. Um, you know, that would be my thought. Or delete the box and do something across the whole front. Um, all of your 12 volt circuit breakers and whatnot are here. Most of these are actually resettable. If it trips, you just click it back in and it's done. It's got a few of them around here. Um, hydraulic reservoir for this runs the six jacks and the two uh, rear slide outs, your galley and living room slides. Um, and then up in the corner there, I don't know if you guys can see that, these here, um, this is, uh, you can shut these off one or the other, you just turn them in or out, um, screw them all the way in, and that will shut off one of the two slide outs in the living room, um, either the door side or the off door side. Um, so if you don't have, maybe you have a storage yard, you just want to get into something behind the kitchen sink, but you can get out the one slab but not the other. You can shut off the one you don't want, run out the one you do want, close it back up, open it back up when you're done. It's a pretty nice setup. Um, because everyone's going to these in-wall systems and everybody wants the storage under the beds, the bedroom slide is not a hydraulic slide system. It is a, um, excuse me. It is uh, an in-wall slide system. So, again, another one of them lights that's motion censored. Um, and this is actually everything to, I believe that's everything anyways, I should say, to uh, set up the generator when you put it in. So, <clears throat> coming back out here, it's got uh, two power awnings. Your main awning here. And then one over that slide out kind of shares your two windows um, which would be good for shading your windows because they're big windows and you'll see how the, the view inside is something else i can just imagine this thing out in some of the campgrounds and some of the public land and everything but this is actually the nicer awning that's on the market it is a carefree of colorado awning this is the nicer one you can adjust the pitch of the awning when it's rolled out, you can have it sloped to one side or the other. You can have it rolled out flat. You can have it rolled out pitched down. Um, some of the other ones, like uh, I know Dometic's got one. Dometic's have nice power awnings. They're they're strong. They're sturdy. They roll up easy. But you got to remember to loosen the knob for the pitch. Otherwise, it gets bound up and it rolls up, and you can damage the arms. So not a good thing. This one here, you can actually leave that wherever you put it, and it'll uh, roll back up flat to the coach <laughs> yeah Justin I like that you got yours under the steps and there's probably a good cubby hole in there I'll show you for that but um again another access panel I'm gonna gather to say that that's for your washer dryer um, to get at those I know it sounds dumb to have it outside but you don't have to pull off the machines in order to uh, to get to the connections and stuff so that's pretty nice. Just a little, little thoughts. Only complaint I have is the door is facing the wrong way. The door should be flipped around. The hinge should be on that side, not this side. So if the wind caught it, it couldn't blow it open. But that's one little detail. Oh, well. And I should also point out that it's possible that that door only goes that direction. It might have a lip across the bottom for water not to run in. So if you flipped it over, it might let water pour into the trailer. So I should point that out. But... Other side for your other pop bottle, again, your leveling jacks. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, and I guess I would be, must be tucked away in there. I think the last one I had had uh, the wires were tied up in there for your solar hook up there. Ooh, there it is. Um, battery disconnect switch. You can kill the whole coach from right there. And it cuts off all power from shore power or the battery to the interior of the trailer. Turn it back on, it's all live again. It was real quick and it went out again already. There it goes. So, I think Justin, that'd be a good spot for your batteries. You could take that vacuum, move it over or get rid of it and stick them right in there. You'd have plenty of room for that. Um, it's set up for an outside TV, satellite and cable. And then you got your recept here for whatever you want to plug in the TV or radio. That little guy there is actually for your 
uh, spare tire carrier. Um, and I guess if I could change anything, it'd be that panel there. I guess I'm curious of what's behind it that's got to be at an angle. I would have liked it to be squared off, but who knows? There's probably a badness to it. But um, instead of having traditional catches for the doors, it's actually got magnets on the coach. So you flip it up, and there it stays. And they're pretty sturdy. They're not they're not lightweight at all. I mean, they're got to put a little bit of pull on it. So I think the two of them, I don't think they would come down and crash you in the head. Comes with clams. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. One of my favorite little add-ons here. You guessed it. More ride, step above, quad steps. Yep, these are not the uh, OEM ones that are spring-loaded. These are just the simpler ones with the hinge. Which I got to tell you, the ones that come with the, uh, that are spring-loaded, you know, it's nice and all, but there's a, a mechanism right here in the door. And damn it, if I don't kick it every time I walk, walk in or out of the trailer that have them. I don't know why, but I do. I kick it every time I walk through. It drives me nuts. Um, <clears throat> again, you got the bigger tires still. And I know, that you know, something I should have mentioned too. I think there's an option to upgrade to, is it 5,000 pound axles, I believe? I think there is an option for 5,000 pound axles. Um, don't quote me on the weight rating, but I'm almost 100% positive. There is an upgrade. The last fellow I was talking to said he wanted, you know, the heavier axles. And he, he wanted the heavier tires, too, in fact, I remember. He didn't want G-rated tires. He didn't want E. He actually got H-rated tires. 125 pounds of air in them tires. Um, and uh, he got the... I'm going to try not to say this wrong. I think it's electric over hydraulic disc brakes. So you can actually dump the uh, drum brakes and have the disc brakes with the hydraulic pump up in the compartment there. And it reads your your bat, your uh, the signal from your truck in as to how much braking power and everything. And then it uh, you know applies hydraulic pressure then to all four wheels. So very nice setup. Um, here's your... For your spare tire carrier to crank your tire down. The back of the coach again with your ladder. And it is a one piece walkable rubber roof. I mean, you still have to maintain it, but um, you know, it is still a one piece walkable roof. So, got your outside speakers, your porch light there, you know. So, and then a little something I think they got to work on. It's actually got a, a pleated shade that pulls down in the door. So you can keep the, you know, people from looking in. Um, problem is you have to open the screen door, open the door, open the screen door, and put it back up so you can see out. Um, but it is a clear view glass. You know, some are smoked. Uh, it's got your your uh, dustpan collector there. You sweep your floor right to there and flip it on. Sucks it into the vacuum. And that there's your vacuum hookup. Hook up your hoses or whatever. It comes with it. And you can vacuum the coach from one central location without having to have a vacuum and drag it around. Um, but that is all 110 power. It's not 12 volt. Um, again, she's prepped for the generator. It's got the switch and the counter, the hour meter there. And you can call me a nerd for this, and it's probably hard to see, but this I like. This is your whole touch panel for the whole camper. Gives you your percentage for your fresh tank, your gray tank, your black tank. Battery charge, which you probably can't see very well, but it says 13.3. Um... Bam, just turn all the lights on with one button. You can go over to this setting here. You can pick through the different ones you want lit up. In fact, if I turn these off, you'll see how many things there are. There you go. There we go. Now it's all visible. So, it'd be fun to walk by and turn off the bathroom light on someone while they're going to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm that kind of guy. You can control both. This is your thermostat. You can control both air conditioning units and your furnace from here. You put it to cool. You can select your temperature. And that's actually your front AC. And she'll kick on here in a minute and start running. There it is. It's set to auto fan. Right now it tells you that it's on high. Um, a little snowflake tells you it's on cold. 
So you got your heat pump, your furnace, or you can turn it off all together. So again, pretty sweet options there. You go over here, you got your slide outs. That comes through there. There you go. Galley slides and bedroom slide. All you have to do. Looks like our kitchen slide's going first. And then it looks like we got our dinette sofa slide. She is. And then uh, this guy, Let's see if we can put out that bedroom slide too. There she goes. Kind of just kind of neat that the mirror just happens to be in the right spot that you can see the room going out. she is so anyways so this is the inside like I said I think it's like 10 foot ceilings I, I'm 6'1 I know I can reach Ooh, the table wasn't here I can reach that and I'm just barely on my tiptoes so that's that's pretty nice it gives you a good amount of overhead storage above the window but you didn't lose anything you still got nice big windows to look out you know and I, I like look I like the bigger view I don't like being feeling like I'm in a dungeon I mean, it is an RV. Um, what's nice is, this is all real wood made at the Van Lee facility in Mississippi. They own the fields where the trees are cut. This is all real wood that's stained. It's not press board. It's not wrapped in vinyl. It's real wood. Um, even the cabinets. None of that. None of that. None of this. Nothing in here is vinyl wrapped woodwork. All of it is real. Even the trim around the backsplash. And this is not peel and stick. This is actually grouted like your house. This is not low dollar cheap stuff. This is the real deal. Very, very impressive. So all the fascia around the, the slide out, that's all real wood. Um, the dinette chairs, Typically, that is real wood, but um, it's actually, you know, it is what it is. It's not cheap junk. It's good stuff. So, but, anywho, so even the little chair rail, real wood. So, anyways, the uh, cabinets here, something that I like, if you kind of look at them, you kind of see like a wood grain view in there. That's because there is. It's a piece of paneling they've mounted in there that gives you that look through the glass. And I would rather have this than the frosted glass because when you put your belongings in here and they shift, they bang into the glass and it, it knocks the uh, that uh, frosted glass, the frosting off the inside. And then people come back complaining going, well, the, the, the stuff's flaking off. Well, sure, it's your stuff in the cabinets moving. But at least this way, it's all protected. Nothing's going to, uh, um, you know affect uh, the glass even if something fell into it it wouldn't bust or crack you know but uh and, oh something i should mention too being all wood it does have or is why hi there it is all craig screwed not stapled it's craig screwed this is how your cabinets are built in your house all craig screwed every cabinet in this coach is like this um, it's got the nicer hinges that are adjustable. So when it comes time that you pick up your coach and maybe you're unhappy with that, they're not even. I've had people that will complain about that. It's simple to just back out a screw a little bit and adjust the door a little bit to make that right. So it's easily workable. The uh, shades. Yep, those are MCD shades. Quick tug. Back up they go. 
Um, the only kicker to this is these are just the nightshades. They're not day nightshades, but they are just nightshades. I'm not 100% sure about the day shades, if they're really worth the headache or not. But I don't know. I kind of like them. You know, if a coach had it, I wouldn't be against it. It doesn't have it. I guess I wouldn't cry about it. But um, all your light switches throughout the trailer, which is pretty neat too, is done by this guy. Um, you know, individually, if you wanted to, you can sit here and turn off your living room lights, your sofa, um, source, and your dinette. So if somebody was sleeping here and they were watching TV, they could turn things on and off that are in their area. Um, and you'll find those kind of spread throughout the trailer. You'll have them kind of, um, oh, there's some over by the stove there. There's some up in the bedroom. There's obviously some in the bathroom as well. Um, the, uh, oh yeah, too, it's got the USB ports already in it. Two of them there. The uh, fancier sofa, this is all 110 sofa. It's got heat massage. You can electronically open and close, so you can recline and sit back up electronically. You can also light up your cup holder, and you can lock it so it can't be moved. So, hold that one. There it goes. Just lay on back. And you can put it all back again without even having to get up. I know my grandfather likes this. He's, he's seen this in some other manufacturers before, too. He likes the, the power reclining sofa. So, um, fireplace. I don't know how well it would work for folks to do any boondocking, but there she is. Puts out a little bit of heat, so it'll actually help take the chill out of the trailer. Um, you can actually play around with some of the settings, depending on your mood kind of fun to mess around with. I'd say that's probably my favorite. You got your temperature you can play around with. Try to turn it off. I think that's off. And there's a timer you can set too for it'll run for so long and it kick off. And it has a remote control so you can actually sit from your couch and turn this thing on and off. So all of your drawers and stuff are on the uh, they're not soft clothes, but they are all ball bearing, full extension door guides. You know, all solid wood. Again, nothing vinyl here. This is all the hardwood and everything, nice hardware and everything. And it's got the double roller catches that hold them shut. And a nice big Furion television with the sound bar. Um, and that's all done up through the radio there. So. You can put your DVD in there, get your surround sound out there. You can shut off. I want to say there's two. Yep, there is. There's two speakers. One there. Where's the other one? There it is. There's the other one. There's two there. And I think there's two in the bedroom. But don't quote me on that. I know there's two outside. That's quite a bit. So, um, that's your CD, uh, DVD. It's got USB, it's Bluetooth, um, got a remote, it's got HDMI hookup, uh, all set up for it. And then way up in the cabinet there in the back, that's where you hook up all your uh, satellite dish boxes and whatnot um, for your direct TV or dish network or whatever you got. So, and what's nice is that the remote actually works through the glass. So you can have the door shut and still, you know, fast forward, skip or whatever, without having to have the door wide open. So, um, again, just a little, a little features. Got a house ceiling fan. If that ain't something nice. It's mounted nice and clean, you know, it isn't something gaudy. The switch forts down there. Maybe not good for the kids or grandkids to be able to play with, but, you know, it's in a good spot. It's got a nice ceiling mantle that lights up and it's backlit. So that's pretty sweet too. Um, the full, uh, not the full grain, the hard surface solid countertops. Um, they're made by, these are these countertops I just found are from AIA, uh, the manufacturer. They're actually up here in Syracuse, Indiana, but there's also a facility down there in Mississippi near uh, Van Lee. And they're pretty nice to deal with. 
the nicer three burner Furion stove. Um, instead of having to do the old click, 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 you just turn it to there, hold it down, hit your igniter, and it'll light. And you hold it down once it's lit, because it's got like a thermocouple set up. Once it's lit, you can turn to whatever temperature you want, and you shut it off. Same thing with your oven. You just turn this guy here, which again is a pretty sweet option. Turn it there, push it in, hold it, and it'll light the pilot. Once it's lit, you just turn it to on, and then it'll give you a readout here and show you what temperature it's going up to. Um, and it's got a kitchen timer. So, it's not a bad oven. It's actually a pretty good size oven. So, that kind of works out, I think, pretty good. But, again, plenty of, plenty of storage. It's got four big drawers there. You got the two over there for your living room. You got one right here. Good for all your utensils and stuff for your cooking or whatever, or silverware or whatever you want to use. Plenty of storage for your coffee pot, toaster oven, or whatever. Under your sink, all the same stuff here. And this is something I like too. You know, again, simple things. A shut off for the faucet. So if you got a plumbing problem with this faucet, you can shut the water supply off to it if you need to and still use the trailer. It's not unusable. And instead of some big gaudy looking hole they cut in the floor, here's actually a shelf with a finished ring that finishes that off. So if that ain't something spiffy, and they even finish off with some trim around the inside of the shelf. Like I said, just the little things, I think, make the coach very, very nice. Um, something I figured out, too, with this, that panel's got a couple screws there to pull that out. And there's access to your refrigerator, if you have a residential fridge, for your water valve. Um, but there actually is a, uh, if it has a residential fridge, it'll actually have one of those little black access doors outside for it. So... I think that's a good amount of storage for your, you know, your cupboards for dishes or cereal boxes or whatever you've got to have. You got a turkey to fit in your Ferion oven. You are kidding. Must not have been a very big turkey. I'm just guessing. Because if it's just, but if it's just feeding four or five years, it's not so bad either. So. Like I said, it's got the bigger RV fridge freezer. It's got the ice maker. All your directions there for the fridge to make it work. If that ain't nice, I don't know what else is. It's got all the little shelf levers here that lock in place to help keep things from sliding off while you're traveling. It's got a... Uh, this little guy here clips onto this. And when you shut your doors, it locks the doors part way open. Um, if you're just a weekend warrior like I am, so that your uh, refrigerator can breathe a little bit, uh, won't uh, won't get mildewy. Again, two more drawers there. I forgot to point that one out. The one underneath the stove. Um, now, oh, that's a big deep one. I bet you that's your shower there. I'll bet you. But. That's a good amount of storage there. And a nice heat duct there blowing out at you. There's one there, and there's one over here. I, you know what I did notice? I didn't see any um, floor registers. Well, nope, they're not in the floor. Maybe you can see it, but that's a heat register there. You've got one there, and then one on the front size island face at the, on that uh, little counter there blowing back at you too. So it's not even running through your floor. It's all above floor for the most part. Uh, so you have to worry about dirt and junk getting down in there. So, and then another good amount of drawer space and storage. I'm pretty sure mom could pretty much fill these drawers up. I don't have that. I think that's all we have in our house is three drawers like that in our mobile home. Ah, here's something I really like. I really, really, really like this. What's wrong with this picture? Any guesses? Now, one fuse there. There is a couple here. Those are necessity fuses, but nothing 
and this coach is fused. Hmm. So what do you do, you wonder, right? It's all right here. In fact, there's a couple tripped. So, one. That's it. That, that one's actually not tripped. That one's, that's the way it's supposed to be. So instead of having to come down here at 2 a.m. because you tripped a breaker for some reason or uh, blew a 12 volt fuse for water pump or um, something, you know, whatever you come up with. You don't have to be out here stumbling through without your glasses. You can just kind of run your hand over and feel what's tripped, reset it, and go. Um, go back to bed and hope it doesn't trip again. But I think that's a pretty simple setup. And this has to do with that touch panel up on the side here, too, when you first walked in. Um, the other thing that's pretty neat is um, it says slides ready, and it says awning ready. So the awnings are ready to go. What you can do is if that touch panel fails, you can reach in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. That button and you push it. And when you hit retract or extend, everything in the coach is supposed to retract. All the slides, all the awnings. And if you need to put them back out again, you hit extend and they all open back up again. So if something fails with the touch panel set up here on the wall, you still have a way to open or close your slides without having to rig up stuff and hope that it works and all kinds of other things. So in addition to all that, all your 110 breakers. And I think it do a pretty nice job of making all this stuff labeled cleanly for you. So when I first saw that, I thought, what the heck is this? And I tell you what, that is very nice. So, ooh, another big one. Whole lots of storage there. Whole lots. So, oh, here's a pretty neat little feature. I know I'm probably bouncing around a little bit, but I'm trying to catch it all as I go. So here, on this touch panel, you've got your galley lights, counter, island, galley accent, dinette, living room, vent. Hmm. Push that. Push the vent lid. Yes, that operates the kitchen ceiling fan. It is a fantastic fan. It's not got a ring sensor on it. So, going down the poles, your fan speed is pretty up there. You kind of got to know what fan speed you want have it set there and then you can go from there because um, all this does is turn it on or off so what other cool gadgets are there in here <laughs> well I can tell you this much because I can cheat a little bit this is the 2019 model so we are in the, I believe it's that guy, that is the rear living room, the 320 GK, and she weighs in at 16,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight, dry weight's 14, a uh, 12.4, I'm sorry, cargo carrying capacity of 3,600, uh, she's 101 wide, height of 12.11 at the top of the ACs, uh, length 3411 and believe it or not if you park this thing outside it's actually not that long it seems a lot lot shorter when it's out in the real world um, 70 gallons fresh water 90 gallons gray 45 black water heater 10 gallon furnace is 42,000 BTUs uh, 60 pounds of propane and a hitch weight of 2600 pounds and then obviously you have um, anything with a double dot so like your height double dot sorry star that is top of your ACs, and I knew that because that's how most of them do it. And then your length is from pin box to the rear ladder, blah, blah, blah. So actually, you drop a little bit off your ladder. That's probably the first manufacturer to ever include that that I know of. Um, but yeah, they've only got, uh, for this, they've got three, eight, or five models. Um, this one I haven't seen, but this one would be really sweet to see because it doesn't it, it seems like if this thing was all closed up, you could Walmart camp 
and not have to open the rooms. The fridge is easily accessed. You can get through to your bathroom. The bed's right here. Instead of being on that side, it's right here. I think this would be a good one for the, the overnighter. This is the uh, this is the front bath model, and this is what we've sent out a lot of here since I've been here. It's actually got a slide in the bathroom, in the bedroom. Um, the front bath with a half bath. Um, it's pretty nice. Um, if you don't have kids or grandkids, that's pretty nice. But I'd have to say I like this version better. Uh, it's got the full bath in the front. Um, basically the same thing here and all this is the same. Except there is no half bath. It's got a real nice, like, a, um, oh, I don't know if you want to call it a bar, a serving area, whatever you want to call it. But it's all cabinets on the base there. Bunch of counter, bunch of overheads. Really, really nice. And then we have... We actually have this guy that we're in now in stock, and we have, well, actually, this, this one we're in is actually sold. i got to get started getting it ready Monday for January. And this guy here is um, the other one. We have a front living in stock. And this one's pretty impressive, I think, for a front living. Um, and then there is just a huge array of just bells and whistles and features. So, but... Yeah, that's that's always something. So let's go up here now. See this lighted handle? Really? It's got my fold away assist handle. I'm not saying I don't like this, but if this don't help the ones that are big drinkers or just old and clumsy, but that's a sweet thing to have. It's not a huge bathroom, but I think this is pretty functional. You know, it's got nice. Storage there for your your towels and whatnot, or your hair care products, or whatever you want to call it. Little drawers for whatever things, I guess. I don't know how useful those clothes would be for folks at full time. I mean, eh, maybe brushes, combs, toothbrushes, you know. Yeah, they wouldn't be too bad. And then, obviously, that's a pretty good amount of storage in there. You could put a little waste basket under there too, instead of having it out in the open. And then the uh, toilet paper holder. Actually, that's probably not a bad spot. Um, maybe that or a door, and I would want a door. Um, and that sprayer there. You got me. Call it up a day, wash yourself off some toilet paper. My thought would be use it to clean the toilet. I don't know. It's a foot, this one has a foot flush model, but they actually have an electronic model. That when you push the button, it adds, you know, you, there's a small button or a big button. Depends on what you did. Whether you took a crap or you peed. And you push the bigger button, and it actually adds water to the bowl. Quite a bit, in fact. And then it'll flush itself and suck it through. It goes through, a, a, like, a macerator. And then dumps it down into your tank. And then it adds water here and washes everything down. The valve will shut, and it'll fill up with some water again. Pretty nice setup. Um, don't know much about it other than it's pretty simple to use. Um, the nicer shower surround, the shower head. So this doesn't have that, um, what do you call that button? Um, there's an on off button. I'm trying to think of the name of it, but basically it's just push it once, push it twice. This has got a little toggle button. So that's kind of nice. Makes things a little easier. You know, that thing won't fail like that spring loaded jobber will. So, yeah, nice shower surround, glass doors, you know, and those guys travel over yonder way. That's all you do to make them travel. So, oh yeah, and that is actually a heat vent underneath your shower so that should actually help keep the trap a little bit warmer if you're in colder weather not saying it won't freeze but just help keep it warmer so and then just the little features that are pretty neat just the, an actual solid wood door not some cheap crap you know just push that down push it back it clicks locked in you don't have to worry about it jumping around going on the road so that's pretty nice so you got your same thing here for the touch panel you got your reading lights over your bed 
you've got your um, bedroom slide extending retract this is probably the only other external button besides the ones down there for the slides and then you got your master lights on and off and that is the entire trailer you got your bedroom and hall lights and this little guy here that's for the thermostat down in the by the door so it's actually not picking up by the entry door what air is there it's actually reading what this room here is for your air conditioner so nice big king size bed whole lot of storage underneath I mean, that's probably a bad angle with the light and everything but here's all your vacuum pumps you get quite a bit of stuff in here a few blankets or whatever two of those dinette chairs actually fold up and you can store them in here if you want um, for travel and then uh, bring them out when you need them um, it's just the two of you is why I have four chairs to kick around so that's kind of nice if you have company or whatever so not a bad dresser setup like I said this is a sort of shorter camper not everybody wants a big 38 foot trailer so this kind of works out nice for folks that that they want that dresser they want the living space but they don't need as much bedroom space you know, if you're on TV, look at that. Again, just a little stuff, man. I mean, look at this. Framed out, wood frame there. Everything's set up in there on a nice wood panel. You got two recepts. All your jacks are labeled for your TV hookups and everything. Um, I mean, really, really well thought out. And something that's else is kind of neat about these Milano's is most of your slide outs are only about yay deep. Half that. This is a full, well, that looks like a three foot deep slide. So you actually pick up a lot more floor space here because you would normally only be about here with your bed slot here, maybe here at most. But now you got more bedroom uh, floor space. So, yeah, this guy here, that's your closet, or one of your closets. Um, but that's actually your washer dryer set up there so you can get the all-in-one unit or you could delete the shelf here and probably still put the stackable uh, washer and dryer and then you still have your power hookups and that's your um, access panel of course it's probably dark and you can't see it well. there's an access panel right there that's better for your plumbing and then that's kind of your center line for your dryer vent to go out the side so yeah that's and then, then there's the closet. So I don't think this is too bad. Got a little shoe rack here for a couple pairs of shoes, maybe ladies' purses or whatever. A little bench thing here to set stuff on. Nice shelf rack here for whatever you need. You know, this is just nothing. That's just where things meet and it's finished off better that way. It's got a nice sturdy. Uh, clothes rack that's not going to sag like I've seen some doing that some that if there's nothing on them I've seen them doing with, with stuff on them um, going on the road the front of the trailer bouncing up and down the bar will actually jump off and fall and all your stuff's laying on the floor when you get where you're going so shut that guy there that guy locks in place for travel there but yeah that's that's pretty much the Volano. I mean, I think they're pretty well-built trailers, you know. Um, every RV is going to have its problems, you know, no matter what you do. But um, you're taking the equivalent of a... Uh, you're taking the equivalent of your house and run down the road. It's the same thing as putting your house through a, an earthquake, they say. I forget what grade, but it's, it's basically the same thing. And it'll... Uh, It'll shake things apart. I mean, that's just kind of the way things are. You know, they're meant to go down the road, but they're always going to need work. I mean, your car does too. Um, I think the way these are built, I think they'll hold up much better than most trailers. Uh, most of the other manufacturers out there. Um, I've talked with some of the guys on the phone at Van Lee. Um, they're pretty nice guys to do business with. Um, they answer your questions. They help direct you with whatever you need. Um, parts or whatever they, they seem very 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 helpful um let's see what else can we got here well, i guess i could roll that out there to show you that oh yeah so 
just a little things, you know, but like I said, that's definitely the better awning if you have to choose. built in awning lights. So, pretty easy. So, then like I was saying, you got your adjustments here, you can push that pin in. I don't know if I can do this one handed, probably not. Probably not gonna work too well one handed, so. Nah. You guys will have to take my word for it on that one. I can't do it with one hand, so it does take two. So, but yeah. Anyways, like I said, just, uh, there's that motion light again. I don't know if I got everything covered on this thing. I got it all pretty much. So, oh yeah, something not very many people think too much of. This thing here, this has a purpose. That's an expansion joint. And a lot of there's a handful of manufacturers out there that don't have that and they will start to develop a crack running out in this general vicinity and there's a bunch of work that has to be done um, it's probably a three-day turnaround I'm gonna say to have that crack fixed but it involves pulling slide it room out doing uh, a bunch of welding in here well Van Lee is just taking it a step above again and they just put that expansion joint in there I know it this doesn't match this, but if they had colored plastic that did match this, it would fade anyway, so it wouldn't match in a year. So it's better to have it the way it is now. So, but yeah, I hope uh, I hope this helps the guys out there that were asking about it and wanting to see it and all that kind of good stuff. But this is the Volano Van Lee Fifth Wheel. I hope, uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it. And I look forward to hearing what you guys got to say about it. You guys have a safe weekend, safe trip out there on the road, all the full-timers, and have a good holiday if I don't hear back from you. Take it easy. Bye-bye.